Now, um, on to one of the, uh, a big topic for strength and conditioning people, and also people, uh, just the general population, is um, deadlifts. Um, uh, many people in, in the general population don't, uh, or they have a fear of their back, let's say. So when they do a deadlift and they feel those muscles working, they think um, it's, it's, they feel their back, they think it's pain. Now, what type of deadlifts or when is a deadlift appropriate for um, just a general population? So these are people who've never had back pain? Uh, people have with a back pain history. Yeah, back pain history. Well, the first thing I have to do is determine what they tolerate. And if they tolerate compressive load on their back, then I'll say, all right, well, you're a candidate to do higher load exercises, which is uh, a deadlift. Uh, the next uh, investigation I would perform is what type of hips do they have? Do they have shallow uh, hip sockets or acetabulums, or are they deep? Now, if they're deep, chances are they should not be deadlifting from the floor. They should be picking up uh, by, with a dead weight that's been elevated a little bit on some blocks. Right. So you see, once again, it depends on what, what the shape of their hips are as to what style of deadlift I, I would uh, consider. Um, I'd then um, manipulate some of the stylistic features of a, of a deadlift to try and shore up whatever weaknesses it was that we detected. One um, example of that would be as the person is setting up for the pull, so they've gone into the deadlift, they've hip hinged, they've, they, they uh, have, have uh, a neutral spine, now the trick would be to really stiffen their whole spine. So they'll grab the bar with a double overhand hand grip, not a reverse hand grip, Okay. And the, the first thing they do is as they're grabbing the bar quite robustly, they try and twist the bar by engaging the lats. And what that does, it stiffens their entire back all the way down to the sacrum. So by bending the bar in external rotation, that's, that, that stiffens the whole back. Now, if you set up in what's called the lifter's wedge, so a nice stiffened wedge, you're, you've, you've, you've grab the bar, you've bent the bar, you've stiffened, you've stiffened your hips, you're spreading the floor, all of these pre-stiffening conditions. Then simply squeezing the bar harder picks it up off the ground. You follow? Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Now, yep. do not lift with your back at that point. Instead, slide the bar up, and I don't know whether it's below the knee at this point or above. It depends on, again, how you set up that individual person. But as they squeeze and externally rotate and then grip into the ground with their feet, externally rotate and spread the floor through the hips, they don't lift with their back. The instruction is simply pull your hips through. And that acts as a, uh, a cam about the hips, so there's no possibility of any uh, shear loads working into the back, etc. And as long as they tolerate compression, you should have a very successful uh, deadlift for that person with a history of pain. The, 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 the last, can I say one more thing about this whole issue, Ian? Sure. And, and that is, we never did ask the question, was the deadlift the very best tool for addressing what you were trying to achieve. In other right. words, could we have, uh, see deadlifting generally uses up a lot of capacity out of the back. If you have a good deadlifting session, generally there's not much capacity to do too much more. Right. However, if we didn't use it all up on deadlifts and we took a heavy two inch manila rope or a one and three quarter inch manila shipping rope and you simply gripped into the ground, put a, lot, a big weight on the end of that rope, uh, say 30 meters away or 30 yards away for you Americans, and then right. pull that rope in hand over hand, you're going to develop a balance between grip strength, back strength, hip strength, hamstring strength, etc. Right. Um, 
uh, and and then you might say, okay, well now I'm getting some good endurance and really balancing the posterior chain. Or maybe you might, might want to do some sled dragging exercises that aren't just quite so intensive in terms of using up that deadlift capacity. So that's the second part of the question. Not only are we, there are all sorts of tricks that we can uh, use to uh, make the deadlift not only more tolerable, but a more, uh, an exercise developing of athletic uh, prowess, but also ask the question, is the deadlift the only tool in our toolbox that we can use, or is there something better to get the job done? Okay. That makes 100% sense. 